after eight days it's finally here my first mystery tackle box this is the trout panfish kit we'll get to opening it in a minute what is up guys it's your boy official back here with another video we got the mystery tackle box finally finally after over a week so we're gonna be busting that open and doing an unboxing this is just the regular box I didn't get the elite box or the ultimate boxes i just got the standard 20 dollars box i got a six months plan so more boxes will be on the way the next box will be a bass box boom tape is off they got good old keeper requirements on there for fish as a joke you know because Walleye should be 16 inches, bass should be 14, trout 12, panfish 6, everything else 18. That makes sense, if you ask me. And if you share this, you can win some prizes. I'm not really sure what that is, but ooh. Like I said before, this stuff is for all trout and panfish. That will be very useful in Oregon and where the areas of water where I usually fish typically. Bass boxes that I get should be helpful as well, but I won't probably get to use them as much. So let's read what this says. The devil takes some tricks from mystery tackle box. Fun fact, silica gel packs are the little square packets you find in shoes, purses, or beef jerky bags. Okay, yeah, we already know that. So let's get to the more relevant information. Six tips for fishing in tough conditions. No matter who you are or where you fish, the conditions will get tough at some point. Instead of giving up, here are the six things to keep in mind when fishing in tough weather conditions. Tip one, if bad weather is in the forecast, the number one thing for anglers to keep in mind is to plan your strategy in advance. Tip two, water temperature is key to understanding fish patterns. So make sure you track the recent and current water temperature to see if it might point you in the direction of more fish. Tip three, when there are tough fishing conditions against you, try and use baits like crankbaits, jerkbaits, swimbaits, or spinnerbaits. Throwing moving baits help you determine where the fish are located and once you find fish in a specific area, you can start throwing slower moving baits to establish a pattern. Tip four, that giant fish is not worth landing if that is gonna be your last fish. Make sure to take precautions if the weather gets bad. If there is lightning, get off the water and seek shelter as quickly as possible. Being around water trees or aluminum during the lightning storm is never a good idea. Tip five, regardless if it's a body of water you've fished before or a new lake you're fishing for the very first time, keep in mind external influences. Have a good assortment of different baits to throw based on the conditions until you can determine a pattern. Tip number six, the last one. Don't get discouraged and keep at it. And most of all, be patient. If you plan in advance, know your surroundings and the conditions for that day, then you'll be one step closer to finding the perfect bait selection. Here's four trout lures you can rely on all year. I'm not gonna read all of it. I'm just gonna skim over it. Jigs, marabou jigs, ultralight spinning gear, probably a retrieve, just struck it off the bottom, let it fall or steadily reel it in. Spinners, I rock spinners, I love spinners. This is a purely spinning kit, so this should really benefit me. Your trout are attracted to the flash and vibrations from little spinners. So you throw them against the current. The water flow makes the lure's blade spin harder to create more flash and vibration. They will strike these things very hard if they get in their way. Spoons, this lure also generates plenty of flash and it's wobbling action when retrieved steadily or with a lift and drop presentation drives plenty of strikes from trout. So this is more of like a shallow stream, deep water lake sort of thing. They want to put that with four or six pound line to get the optimum wobbling action for the lure. Jerk baits, I use jerk baits more for bass and big trout and steelhead and things like that, but the suspending jerk bait works best in or around current. This lure triggers hard strikes from big trout, so that's where you would want to use that for your brown trout, your big brook trout, your big rainbows, anything big. That's less for panfish and more for those big trout species. So if you want to get one big bite, use a jerk bait. You might be able to do that way. Here's the morning routine. 427, my alarm ringtone. The sound of drag peeling wakes me up. That's very factual. 430, floss with 15 to 30 pound braid, brush teeth with bucktail jig. I, I like to floss with 32 pound braid, so I, I don't know if that makes me lead or what. 435, morning cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee, I probably should. 435, oh, we gotta get that extra digit in there. Morning bathroom break, scroll Instagram to see hogs you all catch. Well, the hogs that I dream about catching and never catch, how about that? 525, Emerge from bathroom slash Instagram breaks. We got to go on Instagram for and after going to the bathroom instead of being there on the toilet. Good to know. 30. 
Follow my friends with a boat to come pick me up. Joke's on you, I don't have any friends with a boat. 545, on the water casting as the sun rises. Well, I wish I got up that early, I haven't been lately. 546, catch my first fish, continue to rip lips before work. I don't know who catches a fish in their first minute of fishing, but it's definitely not me. Or my first hour, or first day, or first week. Maybe this mystery tackle box will help me, who knows? 11.45. Arrive at work at Catch Co. office. Do important chief fishing officer stuff. Honestly, I would like to work at Catch Co. Their system is pretty cool. They have awesome baits and they have awesome setups there. 12. Stop for lunch. The Lake Champlain record-breaking trout, if you didn't know. 19.36 pound fish. Caught on a jig while fishing in roughly 100 feet of water. All right, now to the unboxing. We're going to the good part. On my box here, I have... I'll just pull random stuff out of this. We have Warbird, which this looks like some sort of, it's a jig and it's got own jig tied style. It's its own exclusive offer, I think, because a lot of what you get in these boxes is exclusive. So there's the first one. I think this is more for panfish and for crappie and bluegill and all that kind of thing. You wouldn't really see people catching trout on this but I could try. Here, looks like another panfish lure. It's the Hyperglide, which was the first thing I saw on the screen of the box. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Lifelike gill action from wings is irresistible to game fish. Wing action creates a sonar attraction fish can't resist. Unparalleled jigging action glides through the water effortlessly. Feed drop system allows for vertical drop to get back on fish quickly. There's no name for the type of color or pattern, but it's a little blue on top and yellow on the side. I don't know if you can see that. And it has kind of an orange tail on the back. So that could be useful depending on where I go fishing. And then these, these jigs that I showed were white feathered and then they had yellow and green feathers on the end. So that's only a third of what's in the box. Ultra worms. Another panfish setup. This, these are apparently Lucky John's, that's the brand. 1.4 inches, 12 pieces, explosive injection of scent and taste. They're chartreuse red color. I bet these will work very, very well for crappie and bluegill. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of crappie and bluegill around where I live. So it could also be used for trout, maybe, possibly, we'll see. This is looking better. Here we got a Jenko, another Jenko fishing. Um, it's called the afterburner. They call it that apparently because it looks like a jet. This is basically just a white, almost grub colored tail and it's got thick ridges around it which would be good for attracting fish it's called the white knight after burner jig white knight that could be useful for panfish and maybe trout here we got the lake and stream snail bait holders i use these all the time so many of these hooks i get from lake and stream and eagle claw that i use for trout all the time these are a godsend you totally need to have these if you're fishing and that's essentially it for the box however there's a couple more things in here and this is about 25 dollars worth of stuff in the basic box for 20 dollars. so anybody could get this and i actually got my first box for 10 dollars with the newcomer's fee where to fish read that off matted grassy cover grass line and weed lines down trees and submerged timber running under docks and tree stumps Gear recommendations, light to medium action spinning rod, which is what I use. 2000 to 2500 size spinning reel, which is also what I use. Six to 12 pound fluorocarbon monofilament. So the monthly spotlight is that hyperglide lure. This lure that I showed you guys about a minute ago. Oh, this is sick. I didn't even notice this. On the side, the wings flare out on the fall and so it creates a darting action. So that's why they call it the hyperglide because it looks like a hang glider underwater. The wings retract on the rise for a smooth and steady jig stroke. So they come out on the fall and they come back in on the rise. So it looks like you got a consistent jigging action. It says the Acme Hyperglide is a hybrid jigging bait designed to be fished vertically or within close proximity to your target. This lure often gets bit as it falls, meaning you'll feel the fish when going up for the next jig stroke. Use quick and hard jig strokes to intensify the bait's fluttering action. It's ideal for marking fish on a graph or targeting specific fish vertically. So this kind of stuff would probably be bomb if you were to go ice fishing, like it would just be crazy. Further the jig is from you, the more the bait will move with each pop of the jig. That about does that for that. There's one more thing in here. I think it's just a sticker. Tank crossing, boom. You know, I might put that up in my room. That's pretty cool. Looks like a large mouth on there or something. I can't really tell for sure, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna be utilizing that sticker. 
There are not as many trout lures as I thought there was, but hopefully I can add more of that stuff to my panfish set, my panfish boxes. But yeah, this is my first video ever of doing this, my first, you know, mystery tackle box that I've ever had, my first unboxing, so thank you to Mystery Tackle Box for getting me that box. This stuff looks good so far. A lot of this stuff is made for the Midwest, but it should work around Oregon. A lot of stuff does, so we'll have to see. And as long as this video is, I might make the video an unboxing video and do the fishing challenge to test out all these lures at a different date, or I'll just make it a super long video and do two things in one. Here's again what the box looks like, just for a quick recap. Apparently I don't know how to put a box back together. Not exactly what I expected, but you know, it could be worse. I got all this stuff all in a bundle, so that's the fun of it, is you don't know what you're gonna get. So I think it was really fun as a first time experience to get a random assortment of lures and jigs and baits and see what I think about them. So yeah, boom, that's what the box looks like all close together. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, go down there, hit a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, hopefully this will be my first video if I put it out there. I'm gonna try to do a fishing challenge with it, but if that does not work out, make sure to stay tuned, watch my videos, and I'm gonna try to get content out there as soon as possible. Thank you guys.